as we prepare to celebrate our Trinity Sunday Mass this evening, we will begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 259, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your we come together this evening on this Vigil Mass of Trinity Sunday, the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. We've sung, Holy, Holy, Holy. We call out to the Lord God, Father, Son, and spirit. Before we had our entrance hymn, Gerard kindly played uh, St. Patrick's Breastplate. Um, it's a very complicated words and tune if you ever get to do it in its uh, original. But that's, that hymn too calls to mind the Trinity of God. We come together as a community of faith to profess that faith in the Lord our God. As we do so, we entrust ourselves to him. We entrust ourselves and our prayers and petitions. We bring our concerns, the pe things that people have asked us to pray for, and we pray especially in this Mass for the repose of the soul of Kevin Dunley. Aware that the Lord challenges us to live as a community of faith, loving as he loves, sharing and peaceful as he is. We pause for a moment and reflect on our own lives, asking the Lord for strength to do his will, but especially for his mercy and forgiveness for the times we have not done his will, the times we have sinned. Mm -hmm. 
Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading, a reading from the book of Exodus. With the two tablets of stone in his hands, Moses went up the mountain of Sinai in the early morning as the Lord had commanded him. And the Lord descended in the form of a cloud, and Moses stood with him there. He called on the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, Lord, Lord, a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness and faithfulness. And Moses bowed down to the ground at once and worshipped. If I have indeed won your favour, Lord, he said, let my Lord come with us, I beg. True, they are a headstrong people, but forgive us our faults and our sins and adopt us as your heritage. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm. You are blessed, Lord God of our fathers. Oh, okay. Sorry. Response to the psalm: To your glory, to you glory and praise for evermore. To you glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed, Lord God of our fathers. To you glory and praise for evermore. Blessed your glorious holy name. To you, glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed in the temple of your glory. To you, glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed on the throne of your kingdom. To you, glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed who gaze into the depths. To you, glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed in the firmament of heaven. To you, glory and praise for evermore. Second reading, a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers, we wish you happiness. Try to grow perfect. Help one another. Be united. 
Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints send you greetings. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the God who is, who was, and who is to come. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but, those who, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. These words are very familiar to us. They begin our prayer almost every time. We gather in that trinity of persons. But in a few moments, we will also pray in the creed, I believe in one God. So we have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit but one God. I've written down here with a big exclamation mark, mystery. I think the church uh, has pulled a fast one on us clergy for this particular set of Sundays because um, they gave me short readings and therefore they expect me to speak longer about something that is so complicated, so mysterious, that we could spend all of eternity coming to terms with it. One God and three persons. And so it drew to my mind another piece of the scriptures to, from the gospel. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. How do we grasp, how do we grapple with this rather complex set of ideas of faith. We heard in the book of Deuteronomy when God visits Moses that he is a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness and faithfulness. And then St. Paul tells us that the God is a God of love and peace. For the people of Moses' time, before and after, the Israelites probably struck many of them as being an odd bunch. What, you only believe in one God? But how does that work? He can't possibly just be one because he's got so much other stuff to do. Oh no, we've got lots of gods, you see. This god looks after this thing. This god looks after that thing. Um, this one doesn't get on with that one. 
and they have fights. But the Israelites stuck out against certainly the Egyptians and their multitude of gods. When they had returned to the promised land and the influence of the Greeks arrived and the Romans, they still stuck to their beliefs. We hear elsewhere in the Old Testament how they were persecuted for this. One God, the God of Israel. So for many of those around them, that must have been rather complicated for them. But God is a God of relationship. As we have heard, he is tender, compassionate, kind, faithful, loving, and brings peace. These are all things that relate one person to another. And if God has existed throughout all time, he must have related throughout all time because he is unchanging. And so we have this great mystery of Father, Son, and Spirit. I'd like to think of an analogy. It's certainly not the fullness of the explanation, because if I had that, I'd be making a small fortune, selling the answer. But an analogy all the same. Of two people whose relationship is so perfect that the relationship itself becomes a reality. I suppose a parable of that is a, a well-married couple who may be sitting together and from an outsider's perspective, they seem to say nothing. They seem to not relate at all. But their relationship is so strong and so complete that it is there almost tangible. For God, the relationship between Father, Son and Son is so tangible that it is the Holy Spirit. That unity, that oneness at the same time in three persons. The incarnation, the Son coming among us as Jesus speaks about in the Gospel, brings to completion the invite to enter into relationship with God. For those who hear and begin to understand, those who meet the Word made flesh, the Son given to the world, the world so loved by God, God is no longer just a distant figure coming down to meet a lone person on the top of a mountain, but he becomes someone who has walked like us and someone we can come to know. That incarnation came about, as Jesus tells Nicodemus, not to condemn the world, even if condemnation might be justified, but ultimately to save it, to help the people of the world to know God, to see the Father by seeing the Son and being guided by the Holy Spirit. And so we celebrate this great mystery. Do we completely understand it? No. Can we start to understand it? Probably. Will we understand it? Absolutely. Yes, in the fullness of God's kingdom. Do we believe? Yes, mostly. It's still a mystery. Still with the character from the gospel, we have to call out, Lord, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. But nonetheless, we still profess in our mass, in our creed, I believe in one God, in the name of the Father 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, supported by the love of God, Father, Son and Spirit, let us turn as a community of individuals and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things invisible and visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in our holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, the cause of the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The church's strength and grace is drawn from the overflowing love of the Trinity, the great mystery of our faith. It is the outpouring of God's creative power that brings all into being. Gathered to celebrate this feast, let us reflect on the mystery and praise the wonder of the three in one. The Father is the source of all love and goodness, flowing into the Church which brings the knowledge of the Trinity to the whole world. May we, the people of God, be instruments of his love for all. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. The Son is the presence of God's word in the world, entering our history to bring us the good news of love, peace and justice. May we in turn bring this message to our suffering brothers and sisters everywhere, especially the people of Ukraine and the Sudan. May they soon see an end to the conflict and suffering around them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The Spirit is the expression of the love of the Trinity, pouring grace without measure into the world. May we draw on that strength, taking the love of God with us everywhere we go. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The love of the Trinity is available to all but most especially to the suffering, the sick, the needy, all those helpless ones who are the least valued in human terms. May they all, the gentle and mild, the poorest and the voiceless, experience this love somewhere in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We bring these and all our prayers to the silent space at the heart of the Blessed Trinity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May Mary, who brought the Son into the world, join us in our prayers as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, source and destination of all, may we grow ever nearer to you as we follow our path until we reach our reward with you in our heavenly home. We make our prayers through the power of the Spirit and the intercession of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, God, for ever and ever. Amen. So as we prepare our altar for the Eucharist and take up our collection, we place our prayers and petitions upon the altar, praying especially in this Mass for the repose of the soul of Kevin Dunlee. For those who may be watching our recording for the Masses tomorrow uh, are at 8.30, we'll be praying for all our parishioners, and at half past ten for the repose of the soul of Mary Riddell. And as we prepare, we sing our next hymn, hymn number 173, Firmly I believe and truly God is three and God is one. So let us stand and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. praise and glory in His name, our good, the good of all His holy church. Sanctify, by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. 
For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we pray the third Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We say together the communion antiphon. Since you are children of God, God has sent into your hearts the spirit of his son, the spirit who cries out, Abba, Father. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity. Through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. So just ask you please to be seated for uh, what I, I really do believe will only be a few minutes today. Um, just so do ask you, as always, to pick up, take home and read, or alternatively download from the website a copy of our parish newsletter. So as we celebrate Trinity Sunday this week, next weekend uh, will be a very uh, Corpus Christi weekend for our parish as we uh, celebrate with some of our young people uh, on the Saturday uh, making their first Holy Communion and then we celebrate the great feast and solemnity of Saturday night and Sunday of Corpus Christi, uh, the most holy body and blood of Christ. Um, as I've put on the newsletter, do please continue to keep Father Kevin in your prayers. Um, he was, uh, in fact, was truly discharged from hospital and so he's back at the care home, but still got a bit of recuperation to do. Um, and I think although they were uh, planning on making sure he could walk adequately, I think um, he's not quite there yet. He's on the road to recovery, so we do keep him in our prayers. Uh, next Saturday evening at 7 o'clock, so just after this Mass, there will be uh, the ca a quiz night organised by the Catholic Fellowship for the Disabled in union with the HCPT. So uh, if you are interested, um, probably, can't guarantee it, but probably there'll be tickets on the door. Uh, Michael was here last week selling tickets, but uh, if you are interested, I'm sure um, either let the parish office... Oh, the, but as if by magic, tickets have arrived. Um, uh, a different Robinson. No relation. No relation, are you, Michael? Uh, Simon, no. Just the same survey. So Simon has uh, Michael's tickets, so you can buy them this evening if you wish. Uh, I think most of the rest of the things were, were actually in there last weekend, but um, we do ask your prayers for those who have uh, anniversaries at this time. Uh, particularly in this Mass, we've been praying for Kevin Dunley at the request of Margaret, who will be watching this Mass tomorrow, and then ringing me up to see how I did. So I hope we did okay, Margaret. And then uh, also uh, we pray for the repose of the souls of Shirley Etheridge, whose funeral mass takes place Monday week. Uh, Maurizio, or as he was well known as Maz Dorios, and Peter Mayer. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And may their souls, the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. So I invite you please to stand once more. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. So as we go, we sing our final hymn, which is hymn number 152, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. <laughs> 